Hey, what's up, Integrity fam? This is Hackademy episode three on SQL injections. And in this one, we're going to have a look at how we extract some information out of the database without brute forcing, for example, a table. But let's just look into the lab, once again, provided by Portswigger. And we just wanna, like I said, list the database contents. And this is important on non-Oracle databases without doing some brute forcing. This is a shop app like we've seen it before. Make sure to start out with the first and the second video in this SQLi series. We have some refine your search buttons here and there are the products down below. We click on gifts and if we look at the URL bar, we do see that a category parameter with the value gifts is added. And this is creating this query that is returning all the gifts that exist in the database. But now we go ahead and union select uh, the null string because we want to find out how many columns are returned by that initial query. We're getting an error that means one column is not enough. We've seen that in the previous video. We are going to add another null. And what we're seeing right now is we're getting a successful answer. And that means this was correct. So it's two columns that are returned by the initial query that are leading to this screen that we're seeing over here with the products being shown in the shop. So now we want to do something different. This is the new part in today's video. We are going to query table name and table name is a column that exists at all times in information schema table. So you can say from information underscore schema dot tables. And what we are getting with that is we do see all the tables. So as you can see over here, there is not just one or two tables, there's actually a myriad of tables. And we can go over all those tables and see if we find an interesting one. And uses, in this case, BGPX, LR seems to be an interesting one. This could be a user table. So why not trying to get some more information out of that users table? And luckily there's also something else we can do. We can just say, hey, let's look at the column name and now from information schema dot columns and not tables. But now we gotta specify which table we mean. And here we can just say where the table name equals the table name that we just found out about. And if you look closely, it was the one called users underscore BGBXLR. So let's fire that query against the database. And if we do that, we were getting the following. If we scroll down, we do see that we now have the columns of that very specific table mixed in between the regular result of gifts. And that is pretty cool because now we know what the username column and the password column are called. And now we can use a regular union select query as we already know it to get that data out of that table. So now we say, okay, our username underscore M J I yada, yada, yada. This is the column one that we want to get returned. And we also want to get returned password underscore M V T A Z I. So we're going to say union select username and password. And now we just get rid of that whole information schema part that we have used because we don't need that anymore at this point. We're now just going to say, hey, I want to get those two columns from the table that we already have found out about what, what its name is. So we're just going to delete all that. And we're just going to say from users, BGB, VX, LR, and we're going to query the database. And as we can see over here, and this is the exciting part, we do get the content next to the, the gifts that we have also returned in this view. And we do get the administrator. We can see the username and the password. We get the credentials of Carlos. We get the credentials of Wiener. And obviously those are not hashed, which is another security vulnerability. But as this is the case, we can just use them 
go to my account and log in as the administrator. And if all stars align, and you know that they usually do in our series, we are getting logged in as the administrator. And yep, we have successfully solved the lab. All right, let's reiterate one more time what we have seen. So we discovered a SQLi vulnerability and we have done all that what we've learned in the previous videos. So make sure to check them out before watching this one. And we have come to a point where we didn't really know what the interesting table was called. So we were using information schema tables, which exists at all time. You can always use that to look at all the existing tables. We found an interesting one with our users table. And then we did the exact same querying asking for the columns in that table. And we got our username and our password column name. And now that we had the correct table name and the correct column names, we could just query with a union select query for the values that we wanted. And those were the credentials of the administrator. And of course we used those credentials, we locked in and we solved the challenge. And this is it for today. If you have any questions left, leave them down below in the comments. Give this video a like. This is really important to me. And subscribe in the top right corner. And I will talk to you folks soon.